well now do you remember i said we're gonna get practical especially on the few next week comings okay now this is the point how this is how exactly i would invest two hundred thousand in the year 2025 why am i talking about even 2025 and even if you are not even yet there well of course this method is applicable right now 2025 and whatever this is exactly how i would invest 200k assuming this is the money that i have in kenya we say Mbele na nyuma. Mbele na nyuma simply means it's the only money that I have, okay? Now, the point is, how exactly would you invest that amount of money? Okay, for my case, this is what I'm going to give you. And what I'm going to share with you on this particular board, I'm not saying that everyone should invest that money there, but of course, there are some of the principles that will remain constant, irrespective of where you are and who you are. It's like when we say, even if you are in Kenya and jump from a skyscraper down there, of course, you will either break your bone or you will die because the gravity applies. And even if you go to Japan, the same principle will apply. It does not change because you are in Japan. If you jump, it does not mean you go up. So the point is, not everything will be applicable to everyone here, but there are some of the principles will remain constant. That is exactly what you're supposed to understand, all right? This is good, just a speaking in case you're watching me for the first time. You're welcome much here and make sure that you hit that subscription button. Tell me whether you're a first time watcher and where you're watching me from, okay? And if you're a returning subscriber, likes of the masses, the Triple M and uh, Miriam from the South Africa and some guys who watch me there extensively at all the time, God bless you and thank you. Now, let's get into the business. Here we are. Our budget is 200,000. This is the money that we have. And this is exactly how I would invest. So if I have this particular amount of money, first of all, the first question I would ask myself, even before thinking about investing, is do I have, do I have a constant, a constant source of income? as a source of income what do i mean where did i get this money of course yes i have saved from what i have been employed or i am employed okay so do i have a job yes i do have a job okay how much is the job giving me let's say it, i'm earning say thirty thousand. okay 30k okay oh i'm earning thirty thousand. also i'm already having a job so the money is coming in each and every month yes money is coming in how much can i be able okay am i able to cater for my recurrent expenditures eating and what have you yes i'm able to do that how much am i able to save out of the thirty thousand? say i'm saving 10 okay and i'm using thirty thousand as a you know analogy just uh, to explain my point i'm saving ten thousand. okay fine 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 okay now the point is if i do have a job running that i'm employed Fine, I'll think on how I can invest this money. The risk I can afford to take here is different from, let's say, I do not have a job. Let's say I just got fired or my boss got me eating from the office. So he fired me or I was got sleeping. So I am fired. So I do not have a job. So I do not have a constant income right now as we speak. Therefore, the way I will approach this 200,000 is differently because I'm going to treat this one as a tool Listen, I'm going to treat this one as a tool or tool and material tool and a material to do what? To create me, to create me a what? A job. A job in this regard, well, I prefer using the term work, you know, to create me a work that is doing what? That is generating me, generating me what? Income. You see, the problem that people do is that you get the 200. Let's say you have two people here. I know you are already angered. You just want to know how to invest. No, I'm doing a very important thing here to lay the foundational knowledge for you to know how to invest. So you don't have to ask me, how can I invest 500? So this is the concept. You know, Kenyans love these mechanical solutions. Joseph, I have 300,000. What business can I start? They just want to tell you, yeah, baby shop, serious, do this, do this. That's what they want to hear. And you are telling them the obvious thing. They already know them. So, But if you get the general information and view, you can be able to create by yourself. It's like somebody teaching you two lemons plus two lemons is four. Now you're asking how about oranges. It's the same. Now, job to generate you income. The problem that people do is that you have person A and B. Both of them, they have 200K, 200K. So this guy goes by and does what? Invest every money in an MMF. Now, there you are with your 200K. You'd be like, oh my goodness, I'm going to... Or maybe let's say the guy invests their money in a what? In shares. And then you go, oh my goodness, the guy said shares are good. And then, boom, you throw your, your money in shares. The two of you are on different mission. The guy maybe has a source of income or whatever. You don't have a... You are fired. You don't have a job. Then you're putting all your money. Shares won't pay your bills tomorrow morning. Shares won't pay your house rent next month. Won't do that. Probably then the 200 in a, in, a, in a money market fund probably won't pay your rent. Maybe probably your rent is around 15,000 or 10 or whatever. So 
It's good to understand. Now, here we are. Let's say I'm going to give two case scenarios. Let's say I do not have a job. I do not have a thing. It's not any money that I have and I want to create something. Now, this is what I will do. The first thing I will do. The first thing, this one now is constant, irrespective of who you are. The first thing I will do is to have an emergency fund. I must have an emergency fund. In short, a protective layer. Are we together? Because I don't want to start a business. Obviously, right now, as we speak, I'm thinking about the business. But now, I don't want to start a business. And then I'm relying on the business, like, immediately. Like, next week, whatever I'm getting from the business, I want to use it to eat. And I don't want to do that. And, of course, what happens here, it depends, on again, on what, how much is your emergency fund in your money. For example, let's say in a month, usually you say 20000 you have paid your rent, you have eaten a little bit of transport here and there, and there is no fun, there is no nothing. So you don't put emergency fund for eating out, okay? Or you can, you can, but in reality, the emergency fund should meet the basics. So uh, if your emergency fund in a month, you usually use 20,000, I can decide to take like 60,000, okay? 60,000 out of my 200,000. I put aside this 60,000. Are we together? So out of the 200, I take emergency fund of 60,000. I'm remaining with 140,000. Now, you know what? I already know. Just in case a BS happened, I have paid for my rent. I've taken care of my food. Uh, probably, as I'm not going out and whatever, but at least I can move from one point to the other for looking of opportunities. I can actually eat. I can pay my utilities and what have you for the next 90 days. Good. Now I take my 140,000. Now, when I have my 140,000, remember what I want. I want something that is giving me cash flow. At this particular case, you're not suffering from investment. No, please. You're not suffering from an investment. You need cash flow. Cash flow. Therefore, I'm going to be thinking about the business way. I'm going to be thinking about the business way. Okay, do I have to invest everything in a business? It doesn't have to be the case. Now, the moment I speak the business language, there are some other factors I will consider. I will ask myself, I, Joseph, what exactly do I know? What can I sell? What is my ability? What is my profession? What experience do I possess? Because you don't go far from what you understand. You stay within that what you understand. Let's say perhaps I've ever been employed in a shop where they are selling clothes. So I know much about the clothes. Let's say I've ever been employed in a place where they are doing pastry and baking and what have you. So I know things to do with that. So if you say I've employed somewhere where I do one, two, three. So you stick to that particular lineage. You stick to that particular line. Are we together? For example, I have ever worked in the construction industry for four months. I was selling paints. I know interior design. I know all those kind of things. Today, if you give me a paint, I know how to sell it. I know where I will go. I know some people who are contact because I still have some contacts of the people. You check out on what you understand first before you look. I don't know your brother, your sister is succeeding on whatever the thing it is. You don't know how much they have accumulated in terms of the knowledge. You think exhaust first what you understand. That is the immediate step that you take because you already have the experience. So so the learning time would be shorter. But the moment you get to a strange things, the learning time will be what? Will be longer. For example, if you give me this amount of money, I do write books. I do for consultancy. I do have all those kind of things. Let's say I'm fired. First of all, I'll buy a very good phone, maybe worth like 40000 And then I get myself a ring light. I get myself a microphone. And there I am. I'm making videos. And I'm advising people. I'm showing people how to do this. And I'm writing business plans. And I'm writing booklets. And I'm selling to them. And I'm doing that. And I'm going to make money out of that. That is a exactly what you do because i'm staying within my lineage i'm staying within that thing that i understand i don't want to put this money into a, a rifle line. so the moment you realize in the business business why will actually do for me you go into that so for me i would simply take that what i understand for me i understand the pharmacy business of course this one may be a little bit less to start a pharmacy business i will think about things to do with uh, butchery i know much about it i will think about things to do with like farming i know much about it i will think to do with things like uh, say selling these uh, what do you call them the mali mali the plastics things who are the cups the mugs the jugs the whatever the whatever i know that thing as well so i would think putting my money into towards that direction that is why i would pump my money things that i understand things that i understand okay and of course i always tell people even if you're employed please learn to interact with business people you never know you might end up being one so it's good to interact with them and when you interact with them you ask them substantive questions how is the business how is the thing all those kind of things 
okay? So that is where I will dwell so that at least I can be able to actualize a business. For me, will I start a business with a whole chunk of cash? No, probably I will start with 100,000, okay? I will start with 100,000, not even probably, I will actually start with 100,000, I pick that item, and with this 100,000 in my business, I will try to minimize the overheads. If I can be able to start something, for example, let's say I get into the construction industry. Let's say I'm buying paints and I'm reselling them. Obviously, I wouldn't think about having myself a physical shop somewhere. I will actually use my own home as my own store. That is the reality and that is a fact. Now, how do I do that? Or I go buy to my friend who is running a business somewhere and ask them to lease me a, a small space somewhere. Maybe in her shop or his shop, there is a small space that I can actually even pay a rent of 1,500. I just borrow that particular small space and then I be putting my luggage there and then I go to the whatever, what do you call them? Uh, you go into the sites and talking to people and making some calls here and there, you know, uh, what do you call, uh, bidding for those jobs and supplying them and giving them good offers. Because obviously, if you're not paying the rent, you have not done have a lot of overheads then you can actually give them a competitive pricing that is exactly what i'm gonna do what i actually see people do is that the moment you get this amount of money you find somebody is starting to rent a shop maybe let's say fifteen thousand, or sometimes you find somebody is renting a shop worth 20k and then after that the person is actually branding the place if you realize that everything about the branding renting whatever whatever you find like 65k is gone so you're remaining with 35 do you know this money 65k it is gone you have actually used all of it to get what we call the non-strategic things things that you cannot resell them just to realize that the business is going your way only 35,000 let's say i want to start a milk business in kenya you must pay your paint your house white you have to have white tiles there are rules and regulations you have to pay the uh, kenya B B dairy board you have to pay all those things then you realize all that cash is going like 65,000 is gone then you're remaining with 35,000 the 35,000 that's where you buy the, the milk i don't know the other i don't even think even it will be enough to actually buy yourself a freezer and I, you, you get what i'm saying like i will try to minimize the overheads i'll try to max see this is why i love it i would love to get maximum out of minimum because that, that's what I be, I try to minimize all those overheads and expenses that are not necessary. But of course, the moment I realize the business is now doing good and I have the capacity to, to rent and do all those things, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And this is why I always tell people, you can even decide to sell online nowadays. You would rather take a 15,000 out of this uh, uh, and don't ask me where will you get those people. I have them. Actually, I have somebody who is developing my website right now as you speak. He's a university guy. These university kids are very sharp and they won't charge you like an expensive amount of money. Of course, you don't expect they will give you like the best website and what have you. You can remodify it in future. You'd rather even take uh, something like uh, 15,000 out of these 100,000. You go make a website, okay, or e-commerce. Not really a website per se, but an e-commerce. And then you get yourself active on the social media. You have yourself a phone and what have you. Start selling things online. And of course, go in town. Rent a shelf that you're renting, let's say, for 1500 or 2000 And then you push that selling thing. You push it to the people. And people, when are purchasing, when, when people, if one, they want to go to a physical location, they can go to that particular thing and then you can buy it from there. So what I'm trying to do is to minimize these overheads as much as I can and maximize the returns. And once I realize that I'm becoming stable and the clientele base is actually growing each and every day then i would focus on having myself an actual shop or a physical occasion where i'm paying my permits where i'm paying my rent where i'm paying all these kind of things and then i transition towards being active this mentality of thinking that you need to start with a huge chunk of cash boom then elever all of a sudden is, is it's like saying you want to be a content creator and you want to start with this softbox this ring light i don't know this camera you want to start with a big microphone i don't know what a big studio you know, you'll never do anything because that will go for like a million or something. And and you see, you start with that what you have as of now as you transition to that what you want. And when you work that way, you're going to do something. So basically, that is how I would invest my 200,000. Remember, I have my emergency fund somewhere. Remember, I have like 40,000 hanging somewhere. And this 40,000 is a sinking fund. It's a sinking fund in case like the business grows and I realize that business is actually promising, then I can actually go ahead and do what? Go ahead and do something. Something we call taking that money, repumping or 
you know, sort of, you know, pumping into the existing business so that I can grow it. And the moment I realize there is a good cash flow that is coming, I would also focus into raising back my money. This is when we say that you're trying to get back the cash that you used or breaking even. And that money, of course, I will pump it into an investment whereby it's actually earning something and I move myself to the next level. That is exactly what I would do. Probably what I've said may not be applicable to everyone. Use that what is applicable to you because at the end of the day, it's like a hair slow. No matter the route of the reaction it takes, I remember that's what we were told in chemistry back in high school. I may not be said correctly. I was to be told like uh, no matter the route of the reaction, the end results are the same, whatever, whatever. It is what it is. The point is let's get each other at the top there when we were born. Anyway, that's the point. My name is Good Joseph. Talk about investments and all those kind of things. And if you'd like to get my services in one way or the other, my number is always on the description of this specific video. For now, so goodbye.